and welcome back to my water wheel project. Before I can start assembling the wheel, there are just a few things that need to get done. First, I made the bearings. I chose wood bearings as the water wheel will rotate slowly. Supposedly wood bearings are better at maintaining the oil film than roller bearings at such low speeds. There are woods which make very good bearings, but I went with oak as it was the only hardwood I had on hand. I cut up the boards so I could laminate them into large blocks. Unfortunately they would be too thick to be able to drill through, so I drilled each piece individually. I used double sided sticky tape to make sure the centred hole was aligned and then drilled the four outer holes. These holes allow me to clamp the blocks together later with threaded rod. When building the walls for the wheel, I wasn't as careful as I could have been, and so to get the wheel to fit, I had to cut the corner off this stone. Luckily, a grinder makes this an easy job. Knowing I could make the flume shorter, but not longer, I left cutting it off as long as possible. For optimum power, it should end top dead centre, or just behind the wheel. Although, in reality, the power difference is minimal. And finally, I can start assembling the wheel. I half assembled the spokes off camera. Two steel discs sandwiched the spokes with aluminium nuts and bolts holding it together. Compression hubs simultaneously clamp onto the 35mm solid stainless steel shaft and the steel discs. With things getting exciting, it became much easier to recruit help. It made everything progress much faster and it would have been a real struggle to, without their help. With the hubs and spokes on the shaft, the individual bearing blocks can be pushed onto the shaft. A ring of sealant was added to each block to help retain the oil in the bearing and next to the shaft. The threaded rods could then be added and tightened to clamp all the blocks together. Meanwhile, the rest of the aluminium nuts and bolts could be added to the hubs. Aluminium hardware was chosen to reduce galvanic corrosion, as the steel had to be painted anyway. Each bolt was locked in place with two nuts jammed and superglue used as thread locker, so hopefully they won't loosen over time. Obviously, all of this had to be repeated on both sides. Then, the really great bit can start, attaching the buckets. These are pop riveted onto the spokes, 12 for each of the four spokes. That's 48 rivets per bucket section. For now, we only put in a few to hold them in place. With the wheel unbalanced, a board jammed in in the right place locks its rotation, making it much easier to work with. The bucket sections are also connected together by thin strips. These are put in place with a few rivets, and I came back to them later. At this point, all the hard work preparing pays off and everything comes together really quickly. And we are done. Well, kinda. Pushing it into position, there are a few things that need to be changed. I shaved down the sides of the flume so it could fit inside the wheel easily. The two diagonal braces were also in the way. I simply cut them down to size and reattached them out of the way. Shaft collars are attached so the wheel doesn't move sideways and crash into the wall. The compression hubs are the only component I couldn't get in a corrosion-resistant material, 
and so they need protection. As a temporary measure, so that I can take it apart if I need to, I decide to cover them in beeswax softened with oil. If anyone knows of an industry solution, please let me know in the comments, as I couldn't find one that was long-lasting and non-toxic. I may paint them at a later date, but then disassembly would be much harder. If anyone is wondering how true the wheel runs, I'm afraid you'll have to take my word for it. It is fantastic. I am so pleased. By spreading the compression hubs before tightening them down onto the shaft, the spokes are tensioned. This makes the wheel incredibly strong and true running. Laser cut parts are awesome. At this stage, I can give it a little test. And it works! But that is far from the end. Apart from the very large number of rivets I have to do, there is still lots to do. The wheel was never intended as a water feature, but as an electricity generator. And so gearing and electronics are still to go. But that's enough for today. Leave any questions in the comments below and I'll answer what I can. Thanks for watching!